had a great time reading the fabulous Wombat Stew to a whole group of kitties. And as an educator, I thought I would um, hop back on and I would show you guys, um, show educators and teachers how I went about creating this amazing story, Wombat Stew, into a concert production for the graduation of our little preschoolers. I love Wombat Stew. It's a great Australian story with all these fabulous characters. It's about camaraderie, bringing everybody together for a common goal. Yes, we're going to work it out together. And I felt that that's very relevant at these times. I've still got my koalaries on, as you can see. Um, but uh, Wombat Stew, it's a, it's a really fabulous story. And the illustrations are, are really great as well. They're full of character. Like, look at this guy. Whoops, look at this guy down here. Like, he's, he's, he's just like, you know, he's so, he's so Aussie. Hey, he's just so Aussie. Um, so how did I go about it? Well, the first thing I did was I actually photocopied every page in the book. And children, when they look, flick through the book, they get it. But it would be very hard for them to remember the order and the process. So what I did over here, you can see I actually made it linear and although I've got it in rows right now this actually ran right across the room just one huge long line so the children could just walk up to it and see that the lizard came after the emu and the emu came after the platypus and so on and so on and I, I did some other little things up there but I'll, I'll show you them for, in a minute um so I just have to duck down a bit sorry Okay, I dropped some things, sorry. So in order to make this actually happen for the children and give them a bit of order and process as to what happened, um, they were part of the whole thing. They actually made all the costumes themselves with me. We, like We all worked together as a big team and we made all of the um, props and costumes and things like ears. Um, they were fabric at the time. But just popping them onto a headband is really quite a simple thing to do. For the lizard, the lizard was fabulous. The lizard actually had um, a piece of wire that came down, wrapped around the headband and went straight back up again. And then on the end of each one was just a piece of black paper uh, representing a fly. So they had this fabulous halo of buzzy flies around their head. And of course they had a few more to hop into the um, pot of stew. Um, the dingo, he had some ears and made this no-sew tail for him. So it was the same principle, just a towel or something like that. Well, I think it might have been um, waste paper at kindy. And we just got a piece of brown fabric, cut it and cut these tabs. And then you just tie the tabs and that's it. So it's a no-sew tail. All you need is a triangle a big triangle and make it big enough so you can cut good tags and then the frilly bits that hang off it that's fine because you know a tail is furry and so that looks kind of furry for him on the end um, this is actually an old pillow slip so that's what i used for the story tonight to represent so i just put holes in the end here and i um, put the waist and to wrap around the um, dingo's body and that's we created his tail. Um, then of course we have the, the wombat himself. So using just strips of paper, um, I don't think I actually cut them in triangles. I think they were actually just straight like fringing. And the, the principle for doing this is to put one and don't, don't glue down the points. So you don't, you only glue across here. So when you put it and then you put the next one and the next one, the little bits can stand up and it can actually look a little bit fluffy and because it's furry, so you want it to look furry. Um, then I had uh, some bugs. So this one's actually made for from an old um, face mask. Uh, it's not used, of course, and I cut the uh, string a little bit shorter and tied a knot. So when I put the legs on, cut them out like a spider shape, hold them tall and then put the staple down here. So when the leg flops over, you can pull and roll around your finger so they'll get a little bit curly 
And so he's just coloured in with black text. A really simple, but, you know, it gives kids something to do. I've really tried to use props in what I'm doing for this story time to just be um, things that they can get from home. But for the graduation, of course, that's helpful these days. But in 2019, we, we didn't do that. Um, so we have a dingo. We had koala with his ears. He had a little black nose. He was very cute. Uh, emu. I made one of those... Um, snapper things you know out of paper you make a little thing so you can put some eyes on it and a few feathers and then we got a box and covered the box in sort of feathers and a piece of fabric and some feathers and tied it on you know like an old lady's bustle it used to be called a bustle that big buff thing that went on to make a bum look really big so the emu had one of those on their on their butt and then they had the um big um snapper thing and of course she just fluffed in her flower her feathers and then gave each character um uh, you know like a different personality so that it could really bring the show to life the gum nuts well i think we actually just used gum nuts for the koala because that was a pretty simple thing to do and sort of made sense um what else was there oh bugs and grubs and creepy crawlies um you know you can just use a bit of brown fabric I just tied this up with a piece of string so that it made um, a bit of blob of mud or represent a bit of mud so you know you can get a bit creative with what you do but to actually get the kids and to do the story so I created these cards and these cards all represent the character that they were doing so when I created them I did a few things one I had a number on them so it's all trying to relate to how children learn or how they remember is is what it's about teaching people in generally it's about making a connection as to how they will remember and recall the information for when they need it at a later time so they all had a number it, it had the name because we're trying to teach them to read had the image so that's a visual image representation of what it is that they are and again, that's all connecting it together. And the colour, the colour was yellow. So here's the wombat. So the wombat walked on the stage first. He had amble on by himself and scratch around in the in the dirt. Um, actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to back it up a little bit. Prior to when the show first started, I had a couple of young, young ones. We copied this text on the back of the book and they had it there and they read it in front of this room absolutely packed with families never seen the room so crowded it was incredible doing this show was the absolute best thing i have ever done and the rewards that it gave the kids like long life all their life they will remember the the process of bringing this story from a storybook onto a stage it was huge and it was amazing um so, so the first said, so the girls got up and they read the text to this huge room of people, crowd of people. Then along comes the little wombat and he was number one and he just sort of snuck in and he was sort of scratching around in the dirt and along comes in a couple of kookaburras. So the kookaburras flutter in, they flutter around the pot and this and that and they, um, just sort of create a bit of atmosphere in the room because they're fluttering about. Then then comes along, of course, good old cheeky dingo. Now, we had 26 kids in our room, so, of course, we, we had two dingoes. Why not? We had three lizards, so that's okay. Everybody needed a part. The hilarious thing about the dingo was, at the time, the two children who did it had never met. They came to the kindy on different days and they were both such great characters that when they were each saying bits and pieces, they were laughing at each other. It was, it was, they, they were just incredible. The platypus, again, another colour, number four. He was the fourth one who sort of waddled up. And then, of course, we had the emu. So the platypus going, being in contrast, like real blokey, you know, like bow-legged and he wobbles up the bank and he's got his wobbly hat on. And, and then we get to the emu. And with the emu, um, you know, made her a little more graceful and said gave her a bit of a tone and so that she was a bit more slender and slow and moved slower, you know, to create a bit of contrast between the characters. Um, the lizard... When we did the lizard, we had three little lizards 
and they just sort of made them a bit slinky and move around and they did this with their voice and it was really cool and of course they had their halo of flies buzzing around the top of their head and dropped their flies in they were they were fabulous eh? and they all had the little part to say and they all knew their little parts that they had to say but to the dingo um then we had echidna now the echidnas were actually on the stage hiding so before the parents came in we had to hide these echidnas down the front and then the whole room filled up and there's little echidnas and they just had to sit down there and they were so good to stay quiet for such a long time and they did really really well but it really was exciting when they just popped up on the stage in front of all the families um and just sort of was like real okay you know like yeah well take it from me dingo you know get a bit of a tone and it was it was amazing and to contrast with that of course then along comes the sleepy eye koala and she was a bit on the um stage as well you know just hiding at the back a little bit um with prior to the show we were it was lucky for us but unfortunate for all the families in barara that suffered a huge storm but it left the the streets filled with branches from gum trees so the dads popped them into their trucks and brought them down and that was perfect absolute perfect timing to set the stage and the scene for wombat stew for our graduation now big thanks to them really helped make this amazing um so as you're reading through the story um so we've got our scene set we're going to know our characters and um so we had 26 kids, so we couldn't, of course, have all of them as a character on stage. So we had the couple reading the narration at the beginning, and then we had a couple holding up some cards. So the cards are all colour-coded and different and go with the text. So pre-reading skill, of course, C is underlined for crunchy and for munchy, and the big teeth, like crunching and munching, you know, wombat stew, so that... The children, when they saw this card, it said, oh, that's crunchy munchy. Then when they saw the next card, it was like, oh, that looks a bit gooey. So gooey brewy was the next one. And then, of course, we have hot and spicy. Hot and spicy. So he gave the red zigzag, like, oh, that's hot and spicy. And then gooey brewy with the underline of the G and the B. Just to help children visually and... Um, for their literacy just to help them work out which was um which, what that card was instructing them to do as it was being held up um so i'll just take you over here now that you've seen those cards and these uh these, these you'll notice here so the dingo card was black so it's number three and and it's written in black to tell the child this is this is him this is when he's coming in and you can see here the wombat's already on the stage and so is the kookaburra. And as they move along, here's the kookaburra popping up. But here's the blobs of mud, so they're going to sing the gooey brewy tune. And as they went along, they're all numbered. So seven was echidna and he was red and uh, his crunchy munch. Oh, no, that's, yeah, crunchy munchy for my lunchy. He's hot and spicy. Koala was number eight. Oh, these must be out of order. They've been they've they've been away for a little while, and they just had to pull them all out, and they're all stuck with blue, blue tape. Never mind. Um, but yeah, you can see that there was all a bit of an order to this, and it was all like I said, as a big long linear line all around the room, so the children could refer to it at any time. So there you go. So if you have a fabulous story that you want to bring to life and make a um, a show for a little concert production um, teacher to teacher educator to educator you know like I really hope that that um, help bring uh, help make it possible for you for you to do that too and um, I've got my little koala ears here <laughs> um, reach out if you need any help or support happy happy to guide you with what, whatever you might need I love doing this. It was it was amazing, and like I said, the rewards, the the value, the real value was was what the kids got out of it. So that's it from me, and I hope to see you next Wednesday um, at six o'clock for our next story time. And um, hope you stay safe, support each other, look after everybody, 
through this uh, terrible pandemic and I, I hope that we're all you know going back to a way of life that we're more familiar with very soon anyway see you later bye